Hello there guys, it's CoolFoxware here and today I'm bringing you an unboxing and review of the OnePlus 6. Now I know this has been released for a while but since I bought this only a few months ago I would like to give my impressions on the Android 10 experience given that it has already received 3 updates since Android 10 and my overall experiences with it for these few months. Obviously I will go through the unboxing and just like any other smartphone review that I have on this channel I will go through all of the aspects of the phone. Starting with the unboxing you can see the OnePlus logo here on the top and the model number 6 obviously in the middle here as well. Then on the side as you can see all you have written is the speed you need and this just to be clear is the 8GB RAM version with 128GB of storage so this is quite a fast phone since there is also a 6GB 64GB version. Looking at the other side all you have is the model name and on the back you can see the spec here so this is the 128GB which comes with the 8GB RAM as well and also the Qualcomm logo here since this comes with a Snapdragon chip. So opening up the box you can see the phone here right on top and underneath this if you take it out you can see that it comes slotted in on another box and we will go through this box later on and underneath you will find the charging brick here so this is the A6000 version which is a Chinese version phone there is also the A6003 version which is the EU US version but in reality here in Malta it doesn't really matter which version you have as the A6000 supports all of the bands that the networks use here in Malta. Now obviously if you live somewhere else in another country, maybe in the US even, this might not apply. So you need to make sure that the bands are all fully supported by the version that you're going to buy. So taking out the charging brick here and also the charging cable, which does usually come with clips, but in my case I could not find them. That is basically all you get inside of the box. So now going through the smaller box here, you can see that you have a little tab here and opening this up and sliding out the contents. Inside you'll find the manual as well as a SIM ejector tool and the case that you can use with your phone to start off. Now obviously they do have other cases that you can buy, but this basically comes with the phone itself. So at least they do supply you with a silicone case which I opted to use and did not even buy another one since I find this to be pretty good for what it is. So putting that to the side and checking out the manuals here you can see that one of them basically opens up just like this and you can see that it is also written in English. Then you also have the warranty guarantee here but this is all in Chinese so this obviously doesn't apply. And then lastly you will find some stickers here which the seller before me did not use and obviously this is found with all OnePlus phones so you will get these stickers inside of the box. And lastly here taking a look at the sim ejector tool all this does is eject the sim tray and there you can eject to put in your sim card. So here taking a quick look at the case the seller before me also used this as I did find a few scratches on it already and as I said before this is a very basic silicone case but it does serve its purpose really well. Now taking a quick look at the dash charger here you can see that you have the USB type A port here on the back Obviously you also get the OnePlus logo here and you can also see the Dash logo here which they did have to change to Warp Charge now so it is no longer called Dash Charging. And here you can also see that it is a two prong charger so this will work well in US I believe and also in China but here in Malta we do use the UK style plugs so we do need an adapter for this but that is really not a problem. And in the EU they use two style prongs as well but they are cylindrical so this does not work there so you will also need an adapter. And now taking a look at the cable here you can also see that it is labeled with a dash logo here so obviously you can tell that this supports all of the output from the charging plug and you can also see here that it is USB type C so you will not have any problems nowadays since most stuff are coming out with USB type C connectors. So taking a look at the phone, you can see that on the front I do have a screen protector so apologies for that but I will not be removing it. So you can see that there is a small notch here and a very thin bezel all around which honestly speaking is almost not noticeable. And on the bottom here you have a slightly bigger chin although this is still not that big. On the left side here you will find the SIM tray with the SIM ejector pinhole right here. And also the volume rocker which is still very tactile and I haven't had any problems with it whatsoever. On the bottom you will find a single speaker here on the left the USB Type-C port, a microphone and also a headphone jack and this is basically why I bought the OnePlus 6 instead of the 6T because on the 6T onwards the headphone jack was removed and this is the last one that OnePlus made with a headphone jack and something else to keep in mind is that the single firing speaker here on the bottom is not that bad although with the 6T onwards the speaker quality was improved a lot so 
this will deliver adequate quality, although not really the best around. And here on the top you have the single microphone, and apart from that there is really nothing else up here. On the back you'll find the two cameras, so the bottom one is 16 megapixel while the top one is 20 megapixel, but it is only used for depth sensing for the portrait mode, and this is to be honest a bit sad to see since they could have used either a telephoto here or an ultra wide lens but they opted to use a lens that can only be used in portrait mode so I do not really agree with this decision since I do not even use portrait mode that much but nonetheless some people will find it useful if they do use portrait mode a lot. Then you have the dual tone flash here in the middle and a fingerprint sensor which we will talk about later on in the video. Then you get the OnePlus logo here and also a design by OnePlus writing here on the bottom. Then you can also see that the color here is midnight black and this is basically only on the 8GB RAM 1 to 8GB option and the 256GB option and on the 64GB option you will not find a midnight black color. Now taking a look at the SIM tray, if you use the SIM ejector tool here and put it in the pin, you will see that you can easily eject this without any problems. And here you will find two SIM slots which are nano SIM card slots so you will need a nano SIM card just like this one here for the SIM card to be able to get into the phone. Now if you look at this very carefully you can see that there is a very small rubber seal here which basically increases the water resistance so although this isn't IP rated the phone itself is still slightly water resistant and if you search for waterproof tests of the phone you will find plenty on YouTube. So turning on the phone by holding down the power button you can see that it will vibrate and the OnePlus logo will come up and you will see a powered by Android here down at the bottom with the Android guy and this is a newer addition with the Android 10 update. Then you will see the Oxygen OS logo here starting up with the little animation and once it starts up it comes straight to the lock screen. So it is quite a quick power on as you saw right there but obviously if it's after an update it will have to go through all of the processes so it will take a bit longer but other than that if you power it off or restart the phone it should not really take you a long time. So this is basically the UI right here and you can see that this is almost stock Android. Obviously Oxygen OS here is a very close skin to the original Android 10 and here you can see just to let you know which Android version I have going into settings and going down into about phone you can first of all see that i have the 8 gig ram and 1 to 8 gig rom version this does work with a snapdragon 845 and here you can see that the android version is android 10 and you can also tell that the oxygen os version is 10.3.2 so the screen does also get quite bright at around 574 nits i would have appreciated it if it was slightly brighter but overall i am very satisfied with the brightness you can see that you have all of the normal ones such as wi-fi and internet and with Android 10 now you can go into Wi-Fi and if you want to share you can press on the gear icon and press on share and then you can put in the pin or put in your fingerprint so here I will put in the pin and like this you can obviously share your internet password instantly which I find to be a really good addition to Android. Apart from that going into display here you have a few other options and going into screen calibration you can see that you have many different modes here which I prefer to set an AMOLED wide gamut and this will basically get the most saturation out of your screen and I would say the most pleasing colors so if you are not a fan of this make sure to choose one that actually fits you. From here you can also disable the notch here so if you press the second one here you can see that everything slid down to just below the notch which I do not really like so I do prefer leaving it on the default setting here and you also have some other stuff here such as ambient display which I do prefer off as I had been experiencing a few problems on Android 9 with this so going quickly here through the battery settings you can see that I already have around an hour and a half of screen on time but basically the most I have gotten with this is almost 5 hours but that was on Android 9. On Android 10 I have been finding that the maximum I can get is around 3.5 or 4. Now I do not know if this is due to my usage being different from when I was using Android 9 or if it's because of maybe software optimization. So the battery charging is quite quick and you can go from 0 to 100% in around an hour and a half. So overall I am very satisfied with how fast this phone charges. If you go to customization you can see that you have a few different options here as well. So you can change the accent color for example, tone, shape, the icon pack and also the font. If you go to buttons and gestures here you can also change a few stuff from here. I find these to be very very useful so for example if I turn it off and draw an O on the front it will come up with the camera app. If I do a V on the front it will turn on the flashlight and if I do another V it will turn it off. So these are gestures which I do find really useful 
and you can access these from the settings menu as I said. If you go into sound and vibration and then audio tuner, you can see that you have an equalizer in here as well. So if you are not happy with your headphones EQ, for example, you can obviously change and tinker from here. And this can only work when you have either headphones plugged in or headphones connected via Bluetooth. Apart from this, going into security and lock screen, you can obviously set up your fingerprint. If I go into add a fingerprint and for example, register my index finger again, you can see that it is going to tell me that this fingerprint is already registered. So if I switch my fingerprint here, for example, and put in my middle finger, you can see that it is doing it very, very quickly. So you really have no problems with the fingerprint sensor itself. You also have face unlock here, which isn't really that fancy. So I do not really use it since it is a bit less secure than the fingerprint sensor itself. And I do want that when I turn on the phone, I can look at the notifications instead of it going directly into the phone itself. So now going through on to benchmark, I did do this on Android 9 and you can see that I did get a score of 290,000, which is pretty good for what this phone is. And here going into Geekbench, you can see that I did take this screenshot in the 3rd of June, but this is basically the score I got, which is also pretty good for what the phone is. I'm now opening up GPS test and obviously allowing it to use the GPS information. You can see that also from inside it does pick up with a pretty good accuracy. So you really have no problems with navigation here. And I do use this quite frequently on Google Maps as well. And I really have no problems with it whatsoever. So the GPS itself is very, very good. So going into gaming performance and also testing out the speaker, you can see here I have GTA Chinatown Wars and basically as you can tell, this all works pretty well without any problems. Oh, man. Thanks for that. And basically overall everyday use with this phone is really good. So here for example putting up a video of my own. And today I'm bringing an unboxing and review of the Blitzwolf BWFYE8 fully wireless earbuds. So before we start off with the unboxing I would like to thank Banggood for sending out these earbuds. And if you would like to buy them there is a link down in the description. And there is also a coupon code to get them even cheaper. So overall everyday use with this phone is really good as I said before, but the only problem that I did find is with the keyboard itself and this is since the Android 10 update. You can see here that there is a big space from the bezel at the bottom to the keyboard itself and this basically has to do with the update itself since usually there is the navigation bar here on the bottom but since I turned on gestures instead of the navigation bar for some reason the keyboard itself still stayed up and on Android 10 this was not even a problem so I do not know why this happened. So the camera app itself is very easy to use. Basically you have the HDR mode here on the top which I leave on auto. You also have the flash options here on the top which I usually leave off. You also have the aspect ratio here so 4x3 is using the full 16 megapixels of the sensor itself. And then you also have the timer here. So if you leave it at 3 seconds for example there will be a 3 second timer from when you press on the capture button. Then you can easily flick into video mode as well and you can change the flash option here so you can turn it on or off very easily. And then you can also change the resolution at which you record that so you have 1080p, 1080p 60, 4K and also 4K 60. Now I do prefer using 1080p 60 since it uses the optical image stabilization whilst 1080p 30fps uses electronic image stabilization which is usually not as good as the optical one. And to be honest, I have no idea why they do not use optical image stabilization on the 30 FPS, but nonetheless, a workaround is to record everything at 60 frames per second. 
obviously when leaving it at 60 frames per second there will be less light coming in so in low light conditions I would recommend leaving it at 30 frames per second. So video with the front camera there is a bit of cropping but other than that as you can see the video quality is pretty good and you can actually vlog with this if you want so obviously this all depends on what you do and how you use the front camera. For example I do not ever use the front camera itself so I don't really find the use for it that much but this can be very serviceable if you do use it a lot. Other than that, we also have the portrait mode, which basically puts in a fake blur effect on the background, which I do not really use as I do find it a bit gimmicky. But then you also have Nightscape here, which is for night photography. So basically, this is the night mode of the application itself. But other than that, you also have the settings down here. You can also choose time lapse here, for example. You also have Pro Mode here, where you can change everything, for example, the white balance. You can also change the ISO, the shutter speed. You have panorama as well, which is common on most of these camera applications. You also have slow motion, which I really don't use that much, but it can be useful for some cases. And you also have these settings here where you can change, for example, manual HDR control. You can obviously change this and switch it off if you want. You can also choose to store location data. So if you want these to be geotagged, I would recommend leaving this on. That is all for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. This was Cool Fox, and I'm out. Peace.